Framing is one of the most important aspects within Xtool Studio and it's critical for laser engraving in general. A lot of new users don't know how to do it, so this short tutorial today will show you how to frame your item, how to adjust the power so that the light box decreases and increases, and also how to get your engraving in the perfect spot every time. So let's get on and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So here we are, we have the Xtool Studio screen. It's probably gonna start becoming more and more familiar to you all. So the first thing we wanna do is click on Start Project at the top right here, and that will connect us to our machine and open a workspace. So here we go. I've noticed it's really good at connecting now. So the, we've got our screen, we've got our machine connected. I'm using the F1 Ultra here, but this is identical for most of these machines. So feel free to take whatever I'm teaching you now and implement it into your machine. One other critical aspect of framing is making sure before you frame anything that you have focused the laser dot. So we're using the F1 Ultra here, so we have the arrows here. But if you had the F1 or a different one, it's the same there. So as you can see, our two dots are not joined together. That means our laser is not focused from the top surface of our item. So in this case, I'm gonna press the, the arrows and you can see up and down, we'll move them together. And that then means when we are gonna frame our item now, we know it is in relation to the focus of the laser. So let's move straight on to getting it set up. So let me explain what framing is, okay? Framing is basically when you take your object, so in this case, we will find something that is quite a distinguishable shape. Uh, let's go with this one here. So if we want to engrave this onto something, we want to make sure that we engrave it in the right place. That's what framing is. You're framing, you're putting a frame around your item and you are projecting a light image of that onto your item to see if it's going to go where you expect it to go. And then what you can do is you can make micro or major adjustments within the software and it will move the position in relation to the object. So obviously on my machine here, I do have a camera. So I can click the camera button and you're gonna see the item that I'm engraving on appear behind it. There you go. So cameras are good, but they're not accurate. They're accurate to within a certain amount of millimeters, but they're not exact, okay? So that's why we wanna frame. So we've got our image here, for example, and it's a very identifiable image here. I've changed the color of it. Don't worry about that. So what we want to do is select our settings and that will be coming in one of the next tutorials so we're not going to go over that now this is purely framing at the bottom right here you are going to see a little hashed box this was in a different position before but if you click that what you're going to see pop up on the screen now is it is now projecting a square and if you look if i click on the item you're going to see drawn around it is a blue square that is the extent of that image. If you put in whatever it is you put in, whatever the outside shape of it is, so in this case the square, that's what's gonna initially project. However, what we can do is there are two different types of framing. And if you click on this arrow down here, the down arrow, you will see rect, so in the mode section, you'll see rectangular and outline. We currently have rectangular, which as you can see on the screen, is showing a, well, it's a square in this case, but it is literally just the outer shape. If you click on outline now, that is gonna give us a detailed frame of the actual outline of the shape you're engraving, which is really, really handy if you wanna make sure it's going in a precise position. What you can do is click on outline. Sometimes you'll see it automatically switches straight over. I find it doesn't always do that. So once you click to outline, click on the box, so that it stops framing and you'll see when it's framing a light blue box appears when you're not framing it goes white again so we're going to click on that box again and right there you will see it's blue and now if you look at that same framing it has the outline what you can do when it's framing is you can select your image like i've done here you can use your arrow keys and you can see it slowly moves it and it, in live time, it will update the framing box as you do that. You can also left click and drag it somewhere, drop it, and as you can see, it's gonna position it. So this is a really great way, and you can also resize. This is a really great way to make sure you get your engraving in exactly the right position. 
it's critical because you don't want to waste materials at the end of the day. Now, depending on what material you're engraving on, you might find that the framing box isn't light enough. So let me show you how to adjust the brightness of that light. So if you click on that arrow again, you're going to see this section here, which says light power. And right there, you'll see it is set on four by default. There is a note that says the material may get burnt if the light power is set too high. I haven't had that issue yet, but if you set it to 10, that's using 10% of the actual laser power to do a light box. So it could. If you drag it up to 10, it is now giving 10% of the power of the laser, and you're gonna see the light has increased. It is now brighter. So if you've got an object, I mean on wood in this case, it's not an issue. But if you've got an, a, a blue item or a dark item, you can whack it all the way up to 10 and it will increase that light to make sure that you have a nice identifiable, identifiable picture. So there you go, that is framing, that is how you frame. So why is this important? It's important because you don't wanna waste your materials. You wanna make sure that your item is positioned centrally or exactly where it needs to go. And it's really important to make sure that you know exactly where you're engraving. So there you have it. We have our first micro tutorial Xtool Studio lesson done. I've taught you how to, well, what framing is, the different types of framing, how to position your framing box, also how to adjust the brightness of the framing box and why it's important to do it. So I just wanna finish off this tutorial by letting you know what is to come. So we have got tutorials on how to do material libraries, how to do material tests, how to position things, some advanced features, how to do material arrays. There are so many great tutorials coming your way. And if you do think it's gonna be helpful to you and you wanna support the channel, then I would be so grateful if one, you hit the subscribe button down below. And two, if you liked and commented and told me how you felt today, if there's anything I can improve on, let me know because I am here to help you guys. I'm here to project my knowledge, even though it might be limited, onto you guys to help you hit the ground running. Like I said, we are here to help. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope you've got something out of this. And if you are interested in anything else, or if there are any more tutorials you would like me to do, then you need to put it in the comments below, as I said. Thank you for watching. And I am Chris from L3D Accessories. It's been a pleasure teaching you today. And hit the playlist button on the right and check out the next tutorial. Take it easy, guys.